This is a PIR motion sensor. It has the capability to detect motion within a very wide angle. On the opposite side of the board is the supporting driver circuitry and 3-pin connector. The pinout for the connector on this PIR motion sensor is simple. Ground, data, and 5 volt power. Taking a look at the user's guide, we can see the input voltage can actually be from plus 5 volt to plus 20 volt with low milliamp power consumption. The output is a digital plus 3.3 volt signal and the sensing range is 120 degrees within 7 meters. This is a general purpose motion sensor for anywhere inside or outside of the house. There are two adjustable trim pots on the sensor. The first one adjusts the distance sensitivity from between 3 and 7 meters and the second trim pot adjusts the reset delay after the sensor has been triggered from 5 seconds to 300 seconds. By default, these trim pots are set to 7 meters and 5 seconds. The way the sensor works is that once you've powered it up, any nearby movement will trigger the data pin to go high at plus 3.3 volts, and after 5 seconds, the data output will reset to ground until the motion detector senses motion again. Here you can see the backside of the PIR motion sensor and the schematic of the PCB. The three pin connector is here, the two adjustable trim pots are here and here, and a jumper is connected here telling the sensor to trigger only once when motion is detected. For this lesson, let's build a simple security system that uses this motion detector so that whenever motion is detected, the system will turn on an LED and turn on the buzzer board alarm. The hardware of this system will consist of one input from the PIR motion sensor and two outputs, the LED and the buzzer board alarm. The hardware schematic for our system will first consist of the Arduino Nano with its plus 5 volt and ground lines connected to the breadboard's bus lines. Then the PIR motion sensor's data pin will connect to digital pin 3 along with connections to plus 5 volt power and ground. The notification LED will connect to digital pin 2 through a 470 ohm resistor. And lastly, the buzzer board alarm will connect to digital pin 10 along with connections to plus 5 volt power and ground. A quick note, I forgot to add a 470 ohm resistor in between digital pin 10 and the buzzer board's data pin, but feel free to use it or not, either way it should be no problem. Moving over to the software side of this project, First, we'll use the Arduino IDE to declare the LED pin as digital pin 2, the sensor input pin as digital pin 3, and the buzzer board pin as digital pin 10. We will use two integers, PIR state and val, for determining the sensor state and evaluating it. In the setup function, the LED and buzzer board pins are set to outputs and the sensor pin as an input. We also initialize the buzzer board to be off. Additionally, the serial module will be initialized and set to 9600 baud. In the loop function, first we read the sensor's status, then we evaluate it. If motion was detected, we turn the LED on, turn the buzzer board alarm on, and send a message over the serial port. The PIR state variable is also modified to keep track of the current state of the sensor. When the motion is ended and the sensor returns to its idle state, the LED is turned off, the buzzer alarm turned off, and a message is again sent over the serial port. This program loops over and over until infinity. So compile the program, upload it to the Arduino Nano, and let's move on to the experiment. To build the circuit for this experiment, we'll need an introduction to sensors components kit, a breadboard, and a jumper wire kit. The parts from the components kit that we'll use are the Arduino Nano, the PIR motion sensor, the buzzer board, two 470 ohm resistors, a red LED, and three jumper wires. To build the circuit, place the Arduino Nano into the breadboard. The plus 5 volt and ground from the Arduino Nano connect to the breadboard bus lines. Digital pin 2 connects to a 470 ohm resistor that connects to an LED going to ground. Digital pin 10 connects to a 470 ohm resistor that connects to the data pin of the buzzer board. 
The buzzer board also connects to power and ground. And lastly, using the three jumper wires, connect digital pin three plus five volt and ground to the PIR motion sensor. The jumper wires will allow us to point the motion sensor in different directions. And with that, the circuit construction is complete. So first power up the circuit by connecting the USB cable to your computer. And if you want to view the serial monitor output, bring that up inside the Arduino IDE as well. And now you can see as I wave my hands slow or fast, it doesn't matter, a few times in front of the sensor, the LED and alarm are triggered each and every time. Even if I move slowly and try to sneak up on the sensor, it detects the motion and triggers the alarm. Alternatively, if I toss some random objects in front of the sensor, It also easily detects that motion and again triggers the alarm. So there you have it. A motion detection system that even I cannot outsmart. One of the most common places to find motion sensors is in security modules like this one. They are commonly found placed in the corner of rooms and wait to be triggered by any nearby motion. The motion sensor used in these professional grade sensors is actually not that different from the one we used in our experiment. However, these systems will be linked to a more complex security architecture so that the police can be notified if there is a burglar in the house. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Next time, in our final lesson for this course, we will be learning how to detect magnetic fields using a Hall Effect magnetic sensor.